combination of a lot of things, inflation in the U.S. with prices just going up and up and up. So we would have retired in the U.S., which we absolutely did not want to because we really wanted some adventure before we get too old. I would have had to work till 67, 68, something like that. Instead, I got to escape at 60. Especially my brother, he kept saying, look, if you're going to retire in the next few years with interest rates going up, you probably need to get out of that house. The thought of retiring in the U.S., and I love my country, but the thought of living there, it just sounded so boring to me if I was going to be there all through my retirement. <laughs> I mean, I've been there forever. I just couldn't imagine doing the classic retirement where you're sitting in a rocking chair on your front porch, especially after watching you and Chung, you know, figuring out not one place that we wanted to go, but a lot of different places that might fit so that, you know, we can actually go and see and take a look at a lot of places before we decide where we're going to put down roots. A lot of people ask me all the time, you know, can they take their pets with them? What does it take to take your pets with them? And you guys brought your pets with you. It was very challenging and it kind of depends on the size of your pets. So this is Dan of Vagabond Awake. And today we're lucky to have Scott and Lydia on the channel and they're living outside their, they've moved outside their home country and they're going to tell you all about it today. Welcome to the channel, you two. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. We feel like you know you, we know you, Dan. It's such an honor. We've been watching your videos forever. Matagapa is a cooler mountain town in the north of Nicaragua. We spent time in Matagapa and wrote a retire for cheap report while we were there. We'll show you video of our visit there while we interview Scott and Lydia who live there now. The full report is at the first link in the notes below this video. So where are you two and 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 right now in why did, how did you pick that spot that you're in? So right now we're in a little mountain town that you all know because we watched your video of Alpha Nicaragua. And we retired about two months ago. Right. And our goal was to, to grow up and be like Dan and Chung one day. <laughs> so we kind of thought, you know, we were going to, you know, slow travel kind of between over a, a period of, I don't know, four or five years maybe from like, Mexico all the way down to Argentina and kind right. of hit every you know different spots along the way and then maybe kind of do the same thing around Southeast Asia once that done was done right. and we we were really close to actually moving to Mexico and and we we had the date set when I was given my 2 weeks notice and everything and Lydia came over to visit family over here cuz Lydia was born in Corinto Nicaragua Okay. And she kind of came home and, and said, you know, I, I think I want to go to Nicaragua first. So right. we, we thought we'd come over here. Lydia's mom turn, is 89 and turns wow. 90 in November. Wow. Congratulations. So yeah. It's a great opportunity for us to spend some time here, be close to her family for a while. We brought with us three senior dogs. So if you hear a bark every once in a while, <laughs> that's the crew. That's great. But yeah, so we're really enjoying it over here. Well, that's great. And so, and what part, you're from the U.S., is that right? You guys moved down there from the U.S.? And what part of the I U.S. Lived, are you from? Uh, Well, I was born on a, on a little barrier island called Siesta Key, which is right off of Sarasota, Florida. Oh, yeah. And I, I, we were in Florida. I, I lived in Florida for 40-something years. The last 15, we were up in the Carolinas, so we spent about... 10 years in North Carolina and about five years in South Carolina. Beautiful country. Now, one of the things that was fascinating for me about you two, Scott and Lydia, is that a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, can they take their pets with them? What does it take to take your pets with them? And you guys brought your pets with you. What's that been like? What's that experience been like bringing your pets to another country? It was very challenging and it kind of depends on the size of your pets. Really, we, we had gone over every detail of this move over and over and over again. So we thought everything was completely done. And then pretty close to when we were getting ready to move, I mean, like within a month or so, we found out from American Airlines that the, the crate size on their website is not correct coming over here. If we were taking the dogs to Europe, we would have been fine, but we have one large dog and there was no way he was, we couldn't find anybody that would fly him over here. So at the last minute, we started scrambling. We we're just not going to leave them. And so it ended up Lydia 
and one of our daughters and one of our grandsons driving the dogs down. I actually bought a Honda van and they drove the dogs down and Lydia drove the van home. We, we really, you know, part of our thing is like you, we want someplace that's walkable. We don't want to have a car, but we ended up buying one, but our daughter's selling it right now, but we bought one just to get the dogs down here. Okay. So it was, it was challenging. Now, if you have a couple of small dogs and you can put them on the airline, it would be a piece of cake. But Lydia actually ended up doing a 60 hour drive. Okay. So that was my question, whether you flew or drove. And then, and then as you crossed each border, did you have to discuss the dogs with the immigrations? Because you went through Mexico on the drive, right? And then Guatemala and, and so on. How did that go? Okay. Do you need a, a certificate for, for a bit of that certification yeah for each dog for each dog okay. so with that in mexico you don't need anything the only you need is a rabies vaccine rabies vaccine so honduras and nicaragua wanted all kinds of paperwork showing all okay. the different things first two it was just a rabies vaccination second two they wanted to know everything the dog had every shot it had ever had every vaccine okay so a little more challenging than the last two honduras and nicaragua yeah and so all of that, all that had to be signed by a doctor or whatever in the U.S. Mm -hmm. before you brought the dogs. And where did you find mm -hmm. the paperwork for that? Was there a web page or how did you find out where no. what each country yeah. needed? Yeah, the vet knew all the information, which countries needed what. Oh, yeah. oh great. Okay, yeah. great. And did you drive from the Carolinas, was it, all the way down to Nicaragua? Uh -huh. Wow. Yes. Yeah. As far as the dogs go, do your dogs suspect that they might be in a new country now, do you think? I, I think they probably do. I mean, things are very different here. You know, you kind of deal with things that are a little new. So like, you know, there are lots of street dogs here. And plus the culture is just different. I mean, like our neighbors and we've, we've made some great friends since we've been here. Yeah. But like our neighbors, they kind of just open the door and the dogs go in, the dogs go out, the dogs run around the street. They all play with each other. Okay. Uh, not something we're used to. We're used to, you know, they have to be on a leash or your neighbors are upset. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, there's that's a whole different culture in many parts of the world. And yeah, so interesting. Scott and Lydia have a YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it in the notes below this YouTube video. And so and so what was it that made you say, you know what, let's let's leave the U.S. Let's go live somewhere else or let's travel. What was the what was the thinking behind that? Well, a few things, really. I mean, we had, it's something that we had been planning for years. My job has always been in the investment business and the retirement business. The last 15 years was as a retirement counselor in a couple of huge healthcare facilities. So it was something that I did every day, but it was a passion of mine that I would do, you know, in my off time was planning it, watching a million videos and really trying to figure out, especially after watching you and Chung, you know, figuring out not one place that we wanted to go, but a lot of different places that might fit so that, you know, we can actually go and see and take a look at a lot of places before we decide where we're going to put down roots. You know, there was a lot of different things that kind of helped nudge us because the plan was we leave at 62. When I turned 62, Lydia's five years younger, but stress at work, the real estate market in in Greenville, which was our last, the last city that we were in, the real estate just kept going up and up and up, which was nice because we started thinking, you know, we, we could pay for our first year or two just out of the, you know, the, the money we make on this last little house. You know, it was a combination of a lot of things, the inflation in the U.S. with prices just going up and up and up. You know, we, we've had some sick dogs since we've been here. And we, you know, we probably spent in the last two months, maybe a thousand dollars on vets, medicine, all ultrasounds, all different kinds of things. But at the same time, we're thinking, holy cow, we would have dropped seven, eight, 10 grand if we were still in Greenville. Mm -hmm. So wow. it, it didn't make sense for us. I mean, we, you know, we could have stayed if we would have retired in the U.S., which we absolutely did not want to because. We really wanted some adventure before we get too old, but we we I would have had to work till 67, 68, something like that. Instead, I got to escape at 60. Great. And so all that stuff was piling up and then you finally made the decision. Was there one thing that kind of broke the back on it and you said that for sure, let's go now? 
it was probably interest rates going up. My, my brother and my mom have been in real estate and mortgages for as long forever. And my, especially my brother, he kept saying, look, if you're going to retire in the next few years with interest rates going up, you probably need to get out of that house. So, and he was right. We sold at a great time. We got a great price for our house. We found a a little apartment that we could rent month to month and we could have stayed there as long or as short as we wanted to. But it was like everything just kind of kept falling into place for us. Um, You know, the price of the house going up, all of a sudden my brother saying, you know, you might want to go ahead and get out. So uh, it was just perfect timing for everything. It worked out great. Okay, so how long have you been in Matagapa now in Nicaragua? How long have you been there? Two months. Two months. Two months. Yes, sir. Okay. And how did you pick that? How did you pick that city in Nicaragua? What was it that was most interesting? Okay. I I'm born here and coming in December and look the two cities. And I really like Matagalpa, Hinotega. Hinotega is cooler, but Matagalpa is more fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah the weather here in most of the country is just so hot and we love cooler weather. And so for us, the first thing we did is just say, okay, are there any cities with, with cooler weather? And, you know, so we kind of narrowed it down to just this area. And then Lydia ran over in December, got together. She was running around with lots of family that are, she has family everywhere around Nicaragua. If you would like to learn how I fired my boss and traveled the world for 16 years and how I pay for things, grab a free copy of my ebook. Yeah, so she went to the Tenotega and Matagalpa and said, oh, I like Matagalpa a lot better. I think you're going to like it. The, the <laughs> only thing that we, and we knew, but we knew we were getting here right in the, the start of the two hottest months of the year. So we've been, we've been suffering a little bit. But they tell us in three or four weeks, things cool off. So we're ready for the cool down. So you mentioned you'll stay there for a while and then you'll start venturing about more. How long do you think you'll stay there before you start traveling and seeing more places? We're, we're kind of thinking kind of, a little bit depends on the dogs. I mean, we've got two that are 15. You know, we just kind of thought, well, you know, we'll kind of find a nice little place to live, wait till, you know, they pass and then... You know, it just makes things so much easier as far as travel goes. So I I would guess we'd probably be here for a year, maybe a little over a year, and then we'll start traveling. And so how do you feel in terms of the people of Nicaragua? Do you feel they're as friendly as your town you were in in the U.S., Greenville, or more friendly, about the same? What are your thoughts about friendliness and how you receive there? I think it's it's a lot of different, really, because it really is, and United States, sometimes people is not friendly and say sometimes in the United States is a lot of friendly. It's the same over here is sometimes people, but most of the people in here is very friendly, very nice. So Yeah, we, we've made a lot of friends with the yeah. neighbors. I mean, we feel like I we're has, really close to a handful of them. I mean, the, we've given keys to the house to a couple people. We were lucky in, in at least in the Carolinas. It's a real friendly area anyway. I mean, we yeah. we were in Winston-Salem for about 10 years and then Greenville. People are super friendly, friendly. to yeah. the point where like friends would come up from Florida. One of the first things they always say was, everybody here is so friendly. <laughs> so, yeah, we came from a friendly place and this is about the same, I would say. Yeah. If you'd like to be a guest star on Vagabond Awake, please leave a comment below. We're looking for people that live all over the world in beautiful places on much less money than they would have been retired on in their home country. What is it about you two you think that maybe made you someone that would be more adventurous and want to check out the world more, live in more places and see more of the world? What is it about your character you think that brings that about? You know, we've, we've, we've gone to a lot of countries already. I don't know what we're up to, but Colombia, a dozen countries or so. Yeah, in Colombia and and traveled everywhere in the U.S. I mean, almost everywhere. In Colombia, it's a little cheaper too. It's cheaper in living in Colombia. In Thailand, Thailand is went to Thailand a couple times. Cheaper in games. Good question though, Dan. I don't know what it is with our personality, but. Man, the, the thought of retiring in the U.S., and I love my country, but the thought of living there, it's just sounded so boring to me if I was going to be there all through my retirement. <laughs> I mean, 
I've been there forever. I just couldn't imagine doing the classic retirement where you're sitting in a rocking chair on your front porch. So give us an idea of cost of living. What what is do you have a one bedroom apartment there and what does it rent for? What is it you're renting? A house. Okay. It's a, a house with a patio, living room, a, a a kitchen and he completely furniture. Yeah, so it's it's furnished. It's a very typical I would call it like middle class, middle working class neighborhood. It definitely not for everybody, especially Americans. We were, when we first got here, we were in a hotel. We found one hotel in the whole city that would allow dogs. So we, uh-huh. we, we ended up getting like three rooms. And so it's at one point we were like, we have got to find a place and get out of here. It's just the <laughs> hotel rooms were tiny. So luckily, somebody on one of the Facebook groups said, you know, I think I might have something that'll check a lot of your boxes. So we ran over here. It wasn't exactly what we were looking for, really, but it, we had to f- find a place. We wanted a place furnished. We didn't want to have to go out and buy a refrigerator and a stove and beds right. and all that stuff. And we had to have some place worth a, some kind of small yard. So it really did work out perfectly, but it's, it's, it's just your basic Nicaraguan neighborhood. And so right now we're paying $200 a month rent. Wow. And yeah, I mean, it's really, really inexpensive. We are going to kind of start looking around because here we've gone to some, we've had some friends take us to different neighborhoods. So the rents really, you can go anywhere from a hundred dollars a month to a couple thousand a month. And there's, there's some neighborhoods with just massive houses, like I don't 10,000 square feet, 20,000 wow. square feet, these yeah. huge, huge houses. So yeah, but here we're at $200 a month and we were just, we couldn't even believe it. We were thrilled. That's great. It'd be great if you could email me a few pictures, maybe your living room, the front of the house, kitchen, so people can get an idea of what they would get for about 100, 200 a month. So is that like a, with the one year lease or is it month to month or how is it? The landlord ju- just wanted three months. And so our three months will be up June 4th, June 5th. And we are kind of looking around. I don't, we really don't want to move, but if we found a place that was furnished, that had air conditioning, because here we don't, we, we might move. Okay. And what, what are yeah. you paying? What are you paying for utilities? You know, like gas, electric, water, that kind of stuff. What's that running? I've got all my notes here. Okay. Uh, so gas for the, we've got a gas stove and oven. Gas runs about $8 a month. Okay. Electric. Now we're in the hottest months of the year. So I think this is pretty high, but I, I kind of fudged everything a little bit on the high side. So electric this month was $50. And that's with us. There's no air, but we're running fans all over the house, trying to get breezes through here. So $50 a month for electric, $20 a month for water, internet. I got the the fastest high speed internet I could get, which is 200 megabytes. It's it's pretty fast. What's and that? Fast. Cable. And that it came with a package deal. So we don't really watch TV hardly ever, but it's got TV and a home phone. So we could probably get it for $35 or $40. So yeah, really fast internet. Very happy with that. We, we, we've we lost power one time, I think, since we've been here, right? Mm-hmm. And it was only for five or 10 minutes. So okay. it wasn't like, you know, the, no, we haven't seen anything like brownouts that you hear about, like in the Philippines or no problem with that way. Right. And then I guess the other one, cell phones. So they run $15, $20 a month for each of us. Great. And how about like groceries? What do you average per month for that? So right now we're running about $300 a month for groceries. And Lydia and I, we're usually up early. We're, we're running around going to the gym or doing errands early in the morning and running around all day. So we're usually not out at night. I mean, I can't give a whole lot of advice about nightlife. Although I, I, there are some good spots here that I've seen, but yeah, groceries about 300, the restaurants, we've got like a favorite little restaurant we like to go to that we found because there was these really sweet ladies out on the street and right in front of the little restaurant and they were making handmade tortillas. Mm. So 
we stopped to, to watch them make their tortillas. Then we noticed they've got this little tiny restaurant in there. So we go in and they've got like the gallo pinto, which is rice and beans, home hot tortillas right off the grill. And then they've got, you know, I'm vegan. So I'm usually gallo pinto and tortillas and coffee. That yeah. for me is a dollar five. That's great. So just a tad over dollar. Lydia gets like, you know, they have the, the famous, you may have had it while you were here, like the white cheese. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's delicious. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. she'll get like I pinto with eggs and cheese and tortillas and coffee. And I mean, I think Lydia's is usually like a dollar fifty. Yeah, we found a couple. Of ni- we found a couple of nice restaurants there when we were there too. It's a real homey neighborhood restaurants, and, and same thing. We were paying like dollar, two dollars a meal, so it's it's great. So, what are you spending a month on restaurants then, roughly? Right now, it's been about seventy five dollars a month. Okay, and what to, all in? What do you average in, and how much do you how much do you attribute that to the dogs, and how much to yourselves? I mean, we've only got a couple smaller little things like taxis. The taxis here, most of the time, are like a dollar. Yeah. I think if you went from the farthest south to the farthest north, it might be $2. Yeah. So, you know, maybe 50, 60 bucks a month on taxis. We don't use them all that much. We're, we're trying to be healthy and walk a lot. So right, right. really try not to grab the taxis. But if we're loaded up with groceries, you know, beer is about a dollar a beer. I drink maybe three, four beers a week, but I joined a great gym. It's $10 a month. So, you know, all in for us, we're about, it's about eight fifty for Lydia and I, uh, another $50. It wouldn't apply for others though, but just some medicines that I take for about 50 bucks and the dogs we're spending. Now we've had big vet bills just because all of them have been sick, but probably $300 a month for vet and food and all that. They're the most expensive because the only thing really, as far as grocery expense here, is meat is the most expensive. I mean, we go to these big mercados for fruits and vegetables. It is insanely cheap. Yeah, yeah. It's just everywhere. I mean, if yeah, you get really great fruits and veggies here. So I would yeah. say, yeah, for us, it's like running about eight fifty, nine hundred, then maybe another three hundred for the dogs. So overall, how do you do? You feel safe there? Does it feel like safe, safe walking around and stuff? We do. We feel very safe. I mean, we the first few nights, I mean, we were kind of, when we were brand new here, we're kind of locking all the doors and looking, peeking outside, and you just don't yeah, know yeah. what to expect. Yeah. yeah. But after like a week, I mean, especially in this neighborhood, there's kids, like right now, there's kids running around kicking soccer balls out on the street. Yeah. It'll be kind of near the truck. I mean, it's, it's kind of noisy here until about eight or nine o'clock. And then it's just completely quiet. Everybody's at home getting ready yeah. for work or school the next day. So, yeah, we feel really safe here and walking around downtown the same way. Very safe. Right. Although, since it's not a touristy spot, I mean, I do get kind of some strange looks every once in a while. <laughs> but you know, it's, as soon as they look at me kind of strange, if I speak a little bit of Spanish to them, even if it's just like Buenos Dias, you get yeah. a big smile. Right. Yeah, I always oh, smile yeah. when I, I smile is that I call that my international passport to happiness. So I find all over the world when I smile at people, they smile back and wave. It's, it's And we found that there in Nicaragua also. So what type of visa do you have? And, and what's the cost of renewal period? What are you doing about visa? Well, so Lydia is still a citizen. She's got a U.S. passport and a Nicaraguan passport. Oh, great. So she can come and go as long as she wants. I'm just on the tourist visa. So they give me three months, and then I can do three monthly extensions, which just means I have to go to the local immigration office here. I hand my, give my passport. They send it to Managua for a stamp or something. And then I get the passport back after a week. And then, so that gives me one month and I can do that three more times. After that, I've just got to take a run to Costa Rica, go hang out there for an hour or a day and, and come back. So they call that a visa run. So you do a visa run one, it sounds like you come into the country and you have to do a visa run at six months and then another one at a year. So every six months you have to do a visa run and then three of the months during the six months you have to go in and get renewed. What does it cost to renew? It's, I think they said it's like $50. 
thirty dollars. Okay. okay, that's a great. Thought about like you know what do I do for residency? But then we thought you know we have no idea if we yeah. you know we're going to look at a lot of different places. So why go through that? Of course. And we're follow your lead and stay on the <laughs> on the tourist visa. Yeah, that's 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 my advice. Certainly the first few years until you fall in love with the place, and you'll find out from the expats what are the, the easiest way to get a visa in that country is, and what are your choices are, then worry about it. But at first, I, it's me, it's like exploring. You don't worry about filling out a bunch of documents in every country you go to. So, so did you guys decide to get health insurance there? Or are you just paying as you go? Or what were you, what was your thinking on that? No, we're just, we're going to pay as we go. We're both pretty healthy. We exercise a lot. And that really, that was one of the main things that we wanted to focus on. You know, we're like our first year because especially going through COVID. I mean, it was like my job went from running in and out of hospitals every day to being chained to a laptop like 10 hours a day, sitting at home, yeah. doing everything virtually. Yeah. Uh, so was, like, we really wanted to be able to focus on our health and go out and do long walks every day, hit the gym. So uh, great. Yeah, That's great. Walking. Are you happy? Very, very happy. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, we've been really, really happy here. It's been wonderful for Lydia to be able to spend some time with her family. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>